There is a Florida teacher who's a middle school teacher and she was outed for having a white nationalist podcast. These are two different stories. We should probably just start with the part where I said the Florida teacher thing. Um, her name's Dana Diana uh, Volatich. She's a social studies educator at Crystal River Middle School, and she bragged about having her ideology in her classroom and getting away with it during a recent episode of a podcast called Unapologetic, of which she has recorded at least five episodes. A white nationalist middle school teacher thoughts five words or less. Oh my pod, happened in Florida? Not surprised. Anyone see apt pupil? No, I didn't. Mm -mm. But um, uh, you know, let's get a standard curriculum. <laughs> <laughs> Teach to the test in that situation, it's better. <laughs> she said she was kind of in, she was proud of injecting uh, her ideology. The principal confronted her, she ba the principal backed off. Uh, Volatich said that she was, quote, fighting through the cultural jung jungle. In the same episode where she described peppering curriculum with white nationalism, she appeared to agree with a guest calling on far right listeners to infiltrate academics as teachers. This is weird. It's super weird. And it's, I feel like she's not the only one. No, it's, it's, it's like, like, it's a, oh, right, like it's a pandemic. They found one, but like, where are the They're like lurking. It's like an underground like, you know, network of, but it's what's crappy about this is what, how she says that we want to infiltrate academia, and uh, infiltrate academics with these young kids. We want to hook them while they're young, you know? And yeah. that people was a movie, um, was a Stephen King short story about a Nazi, a Nazi general who was living in secrecy in this town. This boy, this boy found out who he was and, and learned all the secrets of what happened in his retirement. In, in the Nazi army, so but this is something similar to that because she's moonlighting as a teacher, but has this podcast about racism and everything that's like wrong in the world. So that's why I did the two. But you yeah, know, yeah, I my mom was a teacher, and I have friends that are teachers. And one thing that they definitely did not have time to do was start a podcast. <laughs> well, they also uh, podcast it just makes him. me think about like. How are you like spend your time focusing on you know a standard curriculum and teaching stuff? I just accidentally kicked the table. Sorry. <laughs> oh, Brett's Brett's passion today. No, like Dad, no, white supremacy like in schools. That's what we need. So. Just don't just you know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe right. I mean there it's bad. White supremacy, very bad. Very bad. Don't start a podcast about it. Also, how the hell do you have the time for this? My mom barely had time to go to my basketball game. When it's important <laughs> to you, you make time for it. Yeah, That's exactly. what I mean. You know? Like it must the hate must really be like seeding. give them. I've it's got to be like Red Bull, you know. <clears throat> it's so weird. Uh, she said they don't have to be vocal about their views, but get in there, be more covert, and start taking over. Uh, that's what the left did. We have to what? take that institution <laughs> back. Children are very important. Communists always knew that. They wanted the minds of children because that is the future. If we could have more teachers in those positions, that would be great. So what do you do though? Because she's saying get in there. So you have black, obviously African American and other nationalities go to school. So do you do not, how do you pepper that into their curriculum? I would love to see it. It would be like, and the Emancipation Proclamation freed the slaves, which was this. <laughs> you know what's interesting? The Confederacy, <laughs> like what? And this happened. It's weird though. If you look into like the way that the Civil War is framed in schools, particularly in the South, they a lot of people don't call it like the Civil War. Some of them call it the War of Northern Aggression or the War oh between the states. Like and and the way things are framed in order to save face. Right. Uh, given that like, and a lot of people saying like, it wasn't really a war over slavery, it was a war over states' rights. There's a lot of framing that is much less covert, but more, but way more accepted widely in certain regions. It's kind of terrifying. This, this has been going on for forever. I remember being a freshman in high school in Albuquerque and uh, my, Assistant principal, something happened. I was I got in trouble or for I don't know talking about a turning class. I did a lot, and he told me he's like, you know what, you should think about getting your GED because kids like you don't make it through high school. I had a teacher fart at me. Fair. Never had either of those happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> Can't yeah. say. What uh, was the worst thing a teacher said to you? Can you remember? Is there one moment? Some people, I like a lot of people advise with them when they go like, uh, yeah, this teacher said I would never amount to anything. And that motivated that. I feel like I saw it in the in the Oscars the other day. 
yesterday. Oh, I, yeah. I was always extremely quiet and shy and I did all my homework on time and like did really well on tests so nobody had a reason to say anything to me. Oh, look not, at you. I mean, I'm, you know, Darren, just saying. you're but, gonna be great. <laughs> you're not gonna get a GED. They definitely didn't say that I was gonna be great but they didn't say I was gonna fail either. And they G just like- And you ended up the same place as dumb Jason I know. over there. And, and, and a GED, I'm not hating on GED because there are people who, who get their GED later yeah. on in life. You know, education is education. But I think, uh, you know, kids are so impressionable and for this is happening now in the midst of all the drama and all the heightened sense of, of alertness we have towards racial insensitivity. And since I came with, well, someone saved me today. <laughs> I'll but, save you. Thank you, Brett. Hugs. But uh, you know, teachers need to realize they have a responsibility in that the, the, the kids that they're educating also look up to them to be role models and really internalize things they say. Because I really internalize what that my assistant principal told me. Of course. That's so, of course. And, yeah. and people don't know, parents and, and teachers alike. They say so many things to kids throughout the day that you don't know what the kids gonna grab onto. And right. I get that it's difficult for teachers to kind of maintain that air that they're not just real people, they're actually teachers. And I mean, it seldom presents itself as there's a secret white supremacist teacher at the school. But uh, I think there's a more broad interpretation of this dynamic. That so can she's be a social studies teacher. Yeah, middle school social studies. Did the did, school fire her? It was a little bit confusing in the article. Did they end up firing her or just like dismissing her while they investigated? I don't um, know. But I, it's it's really funny because um, you know somebody brought up that they thought maybe this teacher's teaching something a little sketchy. The principal asked her. She's like, No, I didn't do anything. And the principal's like, Oh, okay, cool. But then apparently Huffington Post like in, inquired about it. And found all this evidence, yeah. um, and and now the school's like, oh, I guess there is something to this. Right. So it's uh, just interesting that they ne just now are kind of taking the time to kind of dive well, deeper also, into so, so social studies. It's been a while since I was in middle school, at least like three or four years. So is social <laughs> studies? Do you learn history in that as it's well? The version, it's because you, if you don't have. It's it's instead of history in some places. Okay, I think it was called social studies in my middle school too. Right. Okay. Because you but learn more like about like the dynamics of of what came about as a result of events in history. Okay. Right. That's I, where I'm like really like that's where like my hang up is because I feel like if you do your history, if you really are into history and you like look at historical context and the basis and everything, the events that shaped where we are today, um, then. That's it's really bad if you wound up on that and you're like white supremacy is the way. You know what I mean? Like right. I feel like history actually informs us that uh, more than more than ever before that holy wow we have a lot more work to do yeah. and we have some awful things in our past that we need to reshape and reform. Uh, yeah. And that she didn't get that from her studies and she's teaching that. I'm not sure what books you're reading, but it should be known. <laughs> like that what are you reading here? Oh, Mind Kampf. Uh, <laughs> it should be known that. We choose what we're going to teach our children and what interpretation of right. benign events and charged events in the past we are going to present. And um, so what she is fighting against is a choice that has been made and those choices have changed over time. Just look at the portrayal of Native Americans over time. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, you went through the 90s with this like magical realism, hmm. which was way better than what happened before and it's, it's definitely morphed in all these decisions that we make over how to teach our kids are very important and we should not feel uh, you know, apprehensive to examine them. I hope you lived an examined life on this show. That's all the time we have. See you next time.